Hey, what's up everybody? This is Marcos and today I'm going to give you a quick overview on how to use Final Cut Pro X. Now, if you never use this program or if you've used other editing programs out there, you'll find that this is a very quick and easy way to learn Final Cut Pro X. So at the end, you'll know how to import footage, edit, uh, do the trimming, apply effects, and finally export. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So this is what Final Cut Pro X looks like when you open it up. Um, there's different panels. This, uh, this is where you import media. This is where you can preview your video footage. Uh, here's the inspector panel and down here is the timeline. So the first thing we want to do is create a, um, a new library. So go to file new library and let's name this drive space because I already created a, a folder called drive space. And that's where I have this video clip that's, um, that I'm going to be editing. So let's create it, uh, the library and what Final Cut Pro X does for us. It creates this event. Usually I don't touch this event. Um, I'm only creating events when I'm working with very big files, uh, big projects that require a lot of sections. So this is called an event. You can rename it. And, and like I said, you, you, you will only touch it when you're working on big projects. But like me, I'm usually creating YouTube videos. Um, usually I don't touch it. I just leave it as it is. So the first thing you want to do is create a new project and you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to keep the naming structure the same drive space. Now the video format, I did this video clip I'm going to import. Uh, it is 4k, but I want to export at 1080p. So usually even though my footage is 4k, I export at 1080p. So I change these settings. Okay. So once you've, um, created the, uh, the project, you'll find it here called dry space. Now we want to import media. So go to file import media. And here is a folder that holds now holds our library, but this is the video clip I want. So I can select this video clip and just here on the right, the only thing I create is optimized media. And this helps my laptop edit much faster. Um, you don't have to, but it's a good idea to create this. The other thing you can create is proxy media, but I never use this because I find that my uh, laptop can handle this optimized media pretty good. Now, if your computer is very slow, then you might consider creating proxy media. But again, it's uh, the resolution you're going to see on the, your video editing it will be so compressed, uh, which I don't particularly like. So I usually don't create proxy media. So let's just go ahead and import this, this uh, video clip. Okay. So here's our video clip. Um, there's several selections here you can make. I like to just drag it into my timeline. And, uh, right now we can't see our audio file, our audio wavelengths here on this video. Uh, you can go here to this film strip and change the layout. And I, I usually like to keep it here so I can, uh, both see the thumbnail of what of my footage and the audio. Now I can also extend this and I think that makes it better, easier for me to look at. So, um, let's add a little bit of gain here to our audio. And the first cut I want to make is right here at the beginning. And you can see by the audio wave, uh, form that this is where I began talking. So, what I can do is just drag my clip over to the right. And that's where my video clip will begin. And to click play, you can just hit the space bar. That's usually what I do. And you can also pause it by hitting uh, the tapping on the space bar. Okay. So I'm looking through my footage and it seems like th there's a section here where I stopped talking and I want to cut this out. And the way to do that is, um, first of all, you have to drag, your, you can drag your playhead over to the spot where you want to make the first cut and you want to select the blade tool and you click it. Now it created a cut in between in this video clip. And the next part I want to go to here is where I start talking again. So I'm going to make another cut here and again, go back to my selection tool select this portion where it's just dead silence and I'm going to uh, tap delete and there it got rid of that uh, portion of the video clip. Now I would do this with the rest of my video, 
trim it down and usually uh, when you're starting out those are good tools to know okay now the next thing we're going to look at is adding some uh creating an, uh, an intro at here at the beginning and adding some titles so let's go again back to our uh, media panel and select this tab here and as you can see here is broken up into titles and generators um you can go ahead and play around with this usually i only use solids and i use this custom this is my favorite one to use and usually i do the same i just drag it over i don't use this buttons right here i just find that this is much easier to just to drag it over and uh by default it's about 10 seconds and i don't want it to be that long so i can just drag it over to maybe let's say four seconds or five seconds is fine uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a title uh, here at the beginning on top of my uh, this uh, solid background. Um, I can go to titles and I want a very basic title. So let's see. To drag down. Here's a basic title and I can just drag it over on top of my video clip. And to zoom into this timeline, I want to select the timeline and hit command plus and you can also zoom out by command minus so let's go over to my title drag it over you can drag drag the title over just by selecting it and dragging it with your mouse so i want it to begin somewhere around here and i want it to end right there okay so now to edit the uh the title i want to bring over the playhead to sit on top of my title and then we're going to take a look here at the inspector this is where we can change the um, the text let's name it drive space and um let's make it a different font how about if we make it i don't know what's a good font let's do avenir And I want the to be caps and I want to make it bigger. So as you can see, there's many settings you can change here. Okay. So, uh, let's see, is that, yes, yeah, down the middle and here you can, uh, change where your, your title is, uh, you can, you know, put it in your lower left hand side, but I want to keep it down the middle and good thing. There's these guidelines to help us. Okay. So let's play this and see how it looks. Okay, so it just went straight to the video. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a crossfade between this, the intro, and the beginning of my video. So let's go over to the transitions by clicking here on this uh, icon. And cross dissolve is probably the only transition I use. I try to stay away from the other, the other ones. Um, it's just a personal preference. So again, to add this, transition just drag it over and as you can see there let's play it i want it this to be longer so let me zoom in i want this transition to be longer so well if we make it like a second let me zoom out again let's see how that looks hold on it didn't render out let's play it again Okay, so right now the it's not really playing live, but um, and that's because my footage is still going through the transcoding and analysis. So usually it's a good idea to let this run, do the transcoding analysis. That way you can have a smoother playback when you're adding effects and all of this. Okay, um, so let's jump over to the next section, which is. Uh, adding uh, color corrections because this is one of the things you're going to probably use the most and you want to click on this icon the effects browser and go to basics oh well let's search for it it's called color correction there we go it's color correction and this allows you to play with some of those colors so we can just drag over this effect 
over to our video clip and by default it's not going to do anything you have to go over to your inspector and actually play with the colors and the exposure and the saturation so click on that arrow and first of all i begin by playing with the uh, exposure i can drop the shadows uh, bring up the highlights and then the midtones if i need to i can add saturation to my whole clip and or to the midtones so this is a whole separate video <laughs> i can't go into depth on how to color grade or color correct but uh, pretty much it's it's adding colors to uh, different parts of your video clips i can make this warmer by subtracting blue or adding blue there's a lot of things you can do i'm not going to go over this but um i have uh tutorials on how to use this so i'll link to some of those videos in the description i'm i'm happy with my video i'm happy with the beginning with the title and this crossfade and i'm done with the uh, color grading the color correction that's probably what you're going to use 90 to 100 percent of the time just these basic things and i try to stay away from fancy transitions or effects because usually you give you give yourself away it's like the mark of a of a newbie or of an amateur so try to stay to very basic effects especially at the beginning now to export this um there's this this share uh icon here that you want to click on and um this is not what it looks like by default i've narrowed it down to these uh different options uh what you can do is you can add a destination and you can just select export file add it to your list there you go exit out of this now if we go back to our share you can export this file now you can change the settings here i, I said i wanted to export at 1920 by 1080 and usually i keep this as it is okay now you can just click next and i can save it to uh, my desktop or this drive i've already selected so let's save it there click save and now we're just going to wait for it to export so that is the very basics of final cut pro x i know you're going to have a lot of questions i there's i couldn't go over everything uh, there's so many other things you can do with final cut pro x uh, there's different commands to close out different sections uh, or different panels. And uh, I didn't go over scopes, how to use them. That's a whole separate videos. Uh, but again, I would suggest that you go look at other videos I've done in the past, which explain a lot of this stuff. So um, I hope you learned something from this. And if you have questions, like always drop them down in the comment section. I'll try to get to those. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.